I'll tell you what. Everybody's all losing their mind over how amazing Kyle Larson is and how great he is and the freaking Tarleton car in Vegas looks sweet. But here, I don't give a damn. Look at his past career. Only six wins now in one year. He's got six. Yeah, it's all because he said the N-word and raced dirt for a year. No, it's not the fucking case. The reason Kyle Larson is doing so damn good in NASCAR is because NASCAR ain't nothing but how damn good the car is. The talent of Kyle Larson ain't changed. All right? The Kyle Larson from six years ago, the Kyle Larson today, in my opinion, is the same amount of talent. He's got to drive more and got to drive other stuff and late models, obviously, but he's an adaptive, amazing driver. He always has been. He was great before. He's great now. The thing that has changed from those years to this year is the race car. The car is what has changed. The car is why he has six wins now. And I believe that that is because in the old 42 car, it was a subpar equipment vehicle. If every car on the track was the same, Kyle Larson would probably have more than six wins. That car isn't so much better than everyone else's. That car is just good enough to win races. And that 42 car was not. You give Kyle Larson a car that's good enough to win a damn race, and he's going to wax your ass up and down the racetrack because he comes from the dirt world. Christopher Bell ain't up there where he's at because he's not in the priority machine of the Joe Gibbs department. Fortunately for the Hendrick drivers, there is no subpar vehicle. Every car is given attention in other developmental areas. That's not the case. They come from the dirt world. Bell, Larson, and when you do what they did in the dirt world, which is performed very well, you're beating 10 to 15 times the talent on the racetrack. Larson runs mid-pack at the World 100 against late mile drivers just a, uh, two weeks ago. You know why? Because there's 80 cars in there with the same amount of equipment and attention to detail. That's not the case in NASCAR where everybody's on that even playing field because of how much money it costs to be where a Hendrick or Joe Gibbs is. So that's the, the difference, superstars. The dirt world has more competition because of how much it costs to play. It's a little bit lower so everyone can jump in and get in on the game, whereas in NASCAR it's so many multiple millions a year that only so many people can afford to play on the field. So when you get guys like Bill and Larson who can do what they did on the dirt to come on over to NASCAR, they're already used to the competition. They're used to beating drivers that are better than y'all over there in NASCAR. That's the deal. These guys are tried and tested against the best drivers in the world. And the best drivers, especially in America at least, that we have to offer are located on dirt tracks. And Kyle Larson and Bell got to where they are by beating and competing with competing against them and there's been people beat them as well just like at the world 100 but they don't have the millions to go to nascar so they don't have they don't have the opportunity to compete with larson in a cup car they don't got the millions they only have one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for a decent late model and about 1.2 million dollars in a year in operational expenses to have a truck and a hauler and backup cars and engines they don't have 25 fucking million to race in the cup series for one year so, I can't believe you people. You're losing your mind. Larson with six wins. And he only had six before. Dude, the car. NASCAR's about cars. And you only have about eight to ten cars that you have to beat no matter who the driver is. Keep that in hand. Keep that in mind when you're watching that shit on Sunday. Get to a Friday or Saturday night and actually watch where the real men and women get down. That's where Larson's from. But... In my opinion, that's where every great driver should be.